Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, today's uh, presentation of the uh, Energy Watch Lighting Program. My name is Mara Oprah, and thanks for, for joining us today. Um, I could just, if I can just have my colleague uh, Sabina put up the presentation. Great. Thank you, Sabina. So, like I said, um, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Mara and I am representing the Institute of European Energy and Climate Policy, otherwise known as IECP, which is the organization that coordinates this, uh, this project. Next slide, please. I'd uh, like to begin by providing a little bit of background on the project, which will hopefully shed some light on the purpose of why we're here today. Um, so the H2020 funded Energy Watch project began in September of 2020 and will be running until August of next year. Uh, since its inception, Energy Watch has had three main goals. Uh, the first is to share experiences between regional and local public authorities in the field of energy and greenhouse gas inventory. Uh, secondly, we aim to share experiences among greenhouse gas monitoring organizations, uh, for instance, by sharing how to set up a local observatory and involve local stakeholders in the process, by comparing existing monitoring methodologies and processes, or by comparing existing partnership agreements for data collection and diffusion, among several others. Um, lastly, we strive to involve and work with European organizations to define methodologies suited to local needs using bottom-up approaches, um, define common guidelines to compare the performance of territories, improve national and international observation methodologies based on feedback that we receive from um, regional agencies, and finally to evaluate energy policies. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so you may be wondering who the target audience of our project is. Well, the Energy Watch peer-to-peer um, -peer learning program aims to enable regional and local authorities to timely and accurately define, monitor, and verify their sustainable actions and action plans. Uh, the, pro uh, the program will focus on local and regional authorities, as well as their agencies that are responsible for collecting and overseeing the monitoring of mitigation and adaptation indicators, in order to empower them to make use of best practices. Therefore, if you're an energy agency or local authority dealing with a number of projects or CCAPs, Energy Watch courses should be of interest to you, um, as you'll be given the chance to work with our experts and mentors to update and improve the monitoring and verification of your projects and plans. Next slide, please. So uh, now you may be asking yourselves how we will go about doing this. Currently, we are launching our third and final learning program of the project, where four courses will be offered and taught by project mentors based on feedback received regarding the needs of local and regional authorities. Um, these four main areas of interest are pictured on screen and include energy data collection, um, monitoring, reporting, and verification, indicators and strategies for adaptation to climate change, as well as data display, uh, dissemination and validation by end users. Based on your interests and the needs of the organization you represent, you may choose to attend one of these courses. Um, of course, if multiple people from your organization are interested in following multiple courses, each person should register for the one course that is most relevant to them, um, seeing as all of the courses uh, will be taking place simultaneously, meaning that one person cannot attend all four at the same time. Um, under each of these four topics, you will see the name of the Energy Watch partner who will be the mentor of the course due to their extended knowledge of these, uh, of these topics. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so during the program, mentors will help mentees identify problem, problems related to uh, each course topic and suggest areas for improvement as well as share practical experiences on implementing sustainable energy and climate action plans, um, all the while supporting uh, mentees in overcoming various barriers related to their implementation. Additionally, mentors will provide structure and context for discussions, will provide feedback to mentees, act as a resource, and offer assistance in compiling an action and replication plan to suit your needs. 
Um, here you can actually see all of our um, mentors pictured on screen, as well as some, some of the partners. Um, and they will uh, later on give you a brief presentation about how each of the courses uh, work during this event. Next slide, please. So uh, the courses will be carried out on November 15th from, uh, for the entire day and then the 16th for the first half day in Brussels. For those of you who are in attendance today, we invite you to join us here. Um, while those of you who are unable to make it to today's webinar but are watching a recording of the session, you can still register for the courses, but please ensure that you have read the online handbooks about your preferred courses prior to joining us in Brussels. Um, in addition, if you have any questions about the program, feel free to contact me and I'll be more than happy to clear up any doubts about our upcoming courses. If you are unable to attend the courses due to time restraints, our mentors will do their best to provide online learning guidebooks, which can also, um, which you can also follow, ensuring that this information um, that is taught in class will be av available as learning resources outside of the courses. Unfortunately, if you do not attend the courses, you will not be able to speak to mentors on a one-on-one -on -one basis and receive individualized answers to your questions, but you might still learn a lot from the good practices that are covered within each course. Um, I'd also like to make note of the fact that all courses will be carried out in English, will be free of charge, and mentees will have travel expenses reimbursed of up to 500 euro per person per organization if joining. Next slide, please. Um, as a mentee, your role after attending or viewing the recording of this introductory webinar will be to participate in the learning program of your chosen course. Uh, we expect each mentee to be uh, proactive during the course, to commit to um, self-development and assume responsibility for improving skills and knowledge, to be open and honest about goals, um, as well as expectations and challenges faced, to seek advice, opinions, uh, feedback, and direction from mentors, and to be receptive to constructive criticism. Um, we also expect that um, you are able to discuss individual replica replication planning with mentors and finally to give feedback on the courses after you have gone through them. Um, when you begin the program, there will be other mentees following the same course as you, but the group will be small enough to allow for individual questions, yet large enough to meet other part um, participants and exchange experiences with agencies that are similar to yours. Uh, this program will be the first that is fully in person, seeing as previous editions were held online due to COVID restrictions and the public health regulations that we are all familiar with by now. Um, thankfully, this means that we will all be together during the program and we will have the opportunity to interact with everyone from the entire program rather than just the mentees from the course of your choice. Um, lastly, after the completion of the course in Brussels, you are expected to finalize an action plan and attend a follow-up workshop up to a year after the courses have ended to present how um, you are implementing the knowledge acquired during the program. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so prior to diving into the explanation of uh, the courses that will be offered, I'd like to present a couple of fun facts, so to speak, um, to speak on the need for and success of the Energy Watch peer-to-peer -peer learning program. Uh, thus far, we have held two learning cycles in which 58 participants had joined, either online or um, in hybrid formats. Of these, 19 organizations attended each cycle, with 15 participating, uh, with 15 countries participating in the first cycle and nine countries participating in the second. Of those that joined, 17% believe that they will be able to apply the knowledge gained in their course to their work. Um, while 83% strongly agree with this statement as well. Um, similarly, when asked how likely mentees were to recommend this course to other local authorities, regions, or energy agencies, 25% said that they were likely, while 75% said they were very likely to recommend the course. Next slide, please. Hopefully this has given you a good overview of the courses and their purpose. Um, and now I'd like to pass the floor on to my colleagues who will further explain um, each of the programs for courses, as well as the monitoring and verification um, platform we use in Energy Watch. But should you have any questions about what I've presented, please feel free to ask me today or by email. 
And if you're viewing this as a recording, you can also register for the courses in Brussels using the QR code that was uh, pictured on screen. So um, I'd like to pass the stage on now to uh, Debbie from the Three Counties Energy Agency of Ireland to present our monitoring and verification platform. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mara. Uh, Sabina, do you want to open? I'm sorry, I was just sending. And yeah, uh, still a bit confusing. Uh, yeah, so we actually changing, rebranding, change our names. Now we thought it's Energy Agency. Uh, before, if the presentation still some logo to see, I just, uh, sorry. Uh, so I'm Dewi, uh, I'm uh, uh, working in the, e the Southeast Energy Agency for the EU project officer. So basically in here, I would like to explain to you about the learning platform that we using here is called Ferry. So it's already using in the life, uh, learning cycle one and learning, learning cycle two. So the idea of Ferry is actually we want to collect all the data at the same time uh, without actually against the GDPR. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, so welcome again to the master class or the workshop for the learning cycle three. So in here we have mentee and observer. So basically you will see like uh, your mentee and also observer here from our partner. And in, we actually collect all your data on the ferry platform, which is actually content the quality administrator from the lead partner and then uh, technical or learning platform here actually from uh, our Southeast Energy Agency. I'm sorry uh, about the logo. So if you have some issue, if you're asking document and if you got all the information email, mostly from the ferry, so please checking also your uh a junk or your your box because uh some, sometimes it's not coming to you and you can actually contact me and we actually uh can uh, uh solve your problem and there's also mentors that which is actually uh we're trying to connect uh the problem is actually in the beginning when we start um, learning cycle one it was COVID, and the learning cycle two is uh half COVID. Uh, so basically only uh, some is actually we still do the side piece it uh, in the mentors um, but also that like, we do have some issue with the traveling so the we using also the online platform on this uh, next slide please so basically this is the same what mara said and it's just uh, the detail and then i can uh, I was changing this actually because this mostly like like learning cycle one actually we do this but the learning cycle three we have mostly in Brussels so all the document or survey will be finished in Brussels. Next slide please. So basically what you guys uh, will receive first after this uh, master class actually you will receive the uh, the fee to be online learning booklet in this actually all the information that you get what you need to prepare and everything uh, during uh, to in Brussels. And then we explain basic uh, what is uh, the learning cycle, what you need to do. And then after that, including the deadline to complete, uh, complete some survey and upload the document over here. Uh, again, uh, this uh, we will put all together instead of you sending me a lot of email uh, and then maybe I forgot or something. So in here, actually, we're using a platform actually to collect all this evidence together. Next slide, please. So this is a ferry. You basically, you will receive this uh, platform uh, login and then you see this uh, in this. Actually, you have some box over here and you got the uh, Please, uh, sorry, the, the email actually, the sort is energy, uh, but if you're still sending in the 3CA, it's coming also in the new email. And then in here, you can change your passport. And if you have a uh, issue, you lost your password, you can actually contact me over here. Uh, we're trying to actually do less, uh, less paper and more like everything evident in one place. So you, you can access all the handbook and everything actually inside the, uh, the pair itself. Next slide, please. So what actually inside the ferry? So basically, there's a 
you we will have four cores over here and then inside the uh, the fair itself we already uh, uh, provide the handbooks which is actually already developed by the mentor so each course uh, specific get their own uh, handbook over there and you have the the booklet which is explain all of the process on this um, learning cycle so if you ask me can i get the Course, uh, other course uh, handbook uh, in very unfortunately no because uh, the very specific only your course so you cannot access other people course uh, the idea is we we try to reduce uh, break the gdpr and also we have some session actually which is you can share each other and next slide please so, oh, sorry about the deadline. <laughs> I will changing later. So, first, actually, what you need to do is actually letter of commitment. Uh, data is very uh, crucial and they very specific each course. So, each course is very specific. So, you cannot even you actually uh, you have two people from your organization come, but uh, if you choose a different course, you will have the specific letter of commitment. And before you can attend in Brussels, you need to send us the letter of commitment signing. Uh, and after that, you upload to the ferry. So you, you don't need actually notify me because actually we I can check actually, and I can notify you a reminder if you actually not sending uh, the letter of commitment before uh, go to Brussels. Next slide, please. And then other thing is actually assessment survey. So assessment survey is actually before you go to the browser, we want to see actually how much your knowledge uh, before you enter the course. So this actually, uh, you don't need to worry the report will not mention your name is anonymous so it, it's very easy you can using your uh, we can sending the qr code and then you can doing only five minutes uh, by your mobile phone so this actually automatically and you just need the ferry login to see that uh, to checklist all the the assessment survey so we expecting this before uh, the survey is finished before you go to brussels next up please and the stakeholder survey. So the stakeholder survey is similar with the, uh, in here, the idea is actually, you need to fill in the stakeholder survey before the go to uh, browser as well. And during also uh, study. And in here, we we want to see that how to uh, your, your knowledge on the stakeholder, what is the importance of this um, energy work course for you. So all this information you uh, after you filling this is automatically uh, you can uh, automatically report by ferry so you can using the mobile phone uh, and then we send you email actually uh, individual email with the link where to go to the survey. Next slide, please. So study on site in Brussels. So currently we have difference uh, from learning cycle one, learning cycle two. Uh, here we all are getting together in the Brussels. So what we need actually first actually reimbursement form, which is you're gonna send it to the lead partner here. So how you, where you can get the reimbursement form, you can download from Ferry. You see in the my material over there, there's actually reimbursement form. And if you're still confused, you can contact me and then I can uh, uh, give you a step again how to download. It's very easy. And then please take your nice selfie and picture during your study or in Brussels. And then please upload in the evidence. Uh, they're also the same for the observer, but in observer, you can directly send to uh, Sabina or to, to uh, uh, Supposed to be that we have observer form, we can send it to, we can, you can upload as well in the ferry is here. And then, yeah, same like taking picture as evidence for the attendance. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, after you finish and enjoy Brussels, so we ask you again to come before you defer to back to your home country. We ask you to uh, finalize the satisfaction survey. So this is like opposite with the assessment survey. This is after you receive the course and then is there anything improved? And then, yeah, again, it's only five minutes and it's just like a multiple choice. It's not really a lot to, uh, to filling up. So we expecting this, uh, we take like five minutes before you all finish the 
all the costs, you all can uh, start to filling the satisfaction survey. And I will notify if you forget actually uh, to fill in the satisfaction survey. Next up, please. Uh, this is the last one. So this is quite a, a bit longer survey. And this is, you can start uh, filling actually from beginning after the assessment survey, or you can actually, during your study, you can uh, start filling that for uh, what is actually your action plan, what you need to do after you finish this, uh, the course. And this uh, might a little bit uh, a lot uh, information, but it's uh, the, there's two part. One part is actually like multiple uh, answer, like uh, just uh, A, B, C. You just collect it, and the second part is you need to actually filling more detail, like what is actually you planning to do. So the mentor will discuss with you more detail about the action plan survey over here. Okay, the next slide. I think the end. Yeah. Okay, this is. Uh, we have the uh, uh, action plan workshop. So for the learning cycle uh, one and learning cycle two will be together. So we will do October two, uh, October twenty. When a mistake. Uh, the idea is here. Actually, we want to see uh, analyze that what. Uh, what is your plan after finish the energy words uh, course and then how you actually attend uh, how you to implement actually your action plan in your region so we have some uh, survey or falling to monitoring here uh, if you're interested we can also send in to uh, to you to see actually how the learning cycle one and learning cycle to actually do the action plan i think that's all for me and i return back to sabina Sorry, I realized I was muted. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks, Divi, for uh, for your presentation. And I'm actually going to give the floor to our um, first uh, mentor and partner from uh, Xena. Yes. Hello. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our introduction uh, webinar. I will briefly today present to you uh, what will be the course that I will be. We are in charge. So um, I will hear share my screen with you do you see all everything is okay yes we can okay great uh, let's start from the beginning if you can just maybe yeah put it in yeah okay so um my name is uh, Bustian Krenz. i'm representing a uh, partner on the energy watch uh, project uh, xena uh, we're coming from uh, slovenia uh we are an energy agency established by the three municipalities, uh, municipality Valenian, Celia, and Slengradets, uh, which are, uh, I would say, uh, one of the most industry intensive region in, in, the, in the country uh, with the huge power productions um, here and supplying with electricity, our region supplying the, with electricity uh, approximately one third for the entire country. Uh, we have been established in 2006, uh, ever since then we are very much uh, operating with energy management, mostly for the municipalities, starting with all the analysis of the building stock with energy uh, energy uh, reviews of the buildings, so current situations in the buildings, uh, energy consumptions, uh, so on. And we are preparing, and we are very much involved in all the action plans that municipality produce in the re reconstructing of the of the buildings, uh, of the, the traffic, uh, I mean, um, with the street lighting. Also, we are very much involved into these uh, public transportation solutions. Uh, we created a lot of uh, energy actions plans, uh, also SEPs, and recently also uh, SECAPs, um, which will be the topics of the first learning course. Uh, Oh, yeah, sorry, I can would... I just interrupt to get you to share your presentation in full screen? We currently see It's not full slide. screen? Uh, no, not quite. It's not in presentation mode. Uh, okay, I have it on my computer. It's just one more. So We now see your second slide, but just in, in, present, in um, editing mode. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, 
I don't know how to share, but, but on my screen, everything's okay. So I don't know uh, why you don't see the whole screen. Just okay. One more. Now we're on the third slide. We are on the third slide, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, our learning course, uh, number one, is about data collections. Uh, there will be uh, four topics. It's uh, data collections for the baseline, baseline review. It will be the second one will be energy management. Third one will be energy supply and productions and will be about the transport. So the objectives of this uh, data collections course will be to understand the importance of this systematically and timely and periodic gathering of all the energy data. We are talking about here uh, energy consumptions in the public buildings, in the street lighting, in the transport. Uh, so this will be, we will see how to gain all this data, what are the problems uh, creating of this data uh, and gathering all this data and how to make the solutions and how to proceed with all this data. So to understand how to improve this data sharing, what will, what would be the problems here? What, what are the solutions? And of course the object number three will be to able to contribute improving data sharing through the agreements and collaborations among, among the, Energy, uh, energy providers, uh, energy suppliers, and of course on the bottom end also with the energy consumers. And of course to use some of the tools and methodologies for data retrieving, uh, quality energy estimations, and this uh, how to calculate uh, baseline emission inventory, especially in the cases when all, not all the data are available. Uh, of course, we will very much focus. I'm sorry, no, why not? It's not uh, among countries. Uh, do you see the next slide or is it still on the first? No, one? we're still on slide three. We're still. Well, just give me a second. So I'll try to find the solution. Okay. Now we're on slide four. Okay. Okay, now you see the next one. I have to do it manually. I don't know what's wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course, we will uh, focus very much here uh, for the preparation of the setups. Uh, on the previous uh, period, we have a lot of focus on the SAP, but now it's uh, more important is, uh, to focus on the setup. Uh, the setup has uh, two main major uh, topics. Uh, one first one is uh, baseline emission inventory, and the second one is the risk and vulnerability assessment. So, in the first one, in the baseline emission inventory, we will focus how to define uh, baseline emission inventory. Uh, we will focus this on, on the public buildings, uh, public transportation and uh, street lighting. So it will allow us to identify the principal sources of the CO2 emissions and their respective reduction potentials. We will not talk only about the CO2, but also other greenhouse gas emissions uh, in, a co in cooperation with the uh, CO2 emissions. So we will, with the baseline emission inventory, we will show the local authority what was at the beginning and what is the progress towards the objectives, how to receive the significant uh, CO2 reductions. Uh, risk and vulnerability assessment is a new part of uh, SECAP. Um, these European cities have a, are very uh, vulnerable to the impacts of the climate change. Uh, we are facing now a lot of uh, uh, heat, a lot of dry, periods, uh, a lot of flooding, uh, droughts, and this is uh, very different among the regions in the in the Europe and of course among the municipalities, these uh, risk and vulnerability assessments are uh, quite uh, comprehensive and they are very much uh, challenging nowadays how to approach and how to avoid uh, this risk. Uh, we also will determine the nature and extent of this, all these risks by analyzing, uh, analyzing also the potential hazards and uh, assessing the vulnerability that could pose from this such threat. So this risk and vulnerability assessment defines appropriate adaptation strategies to improve the resilience of the territory. Uh, the main difference between the baseline emission inventory is that we are overcoming these barriers in the, uh, the baseline emission inventory, but with the risk and the vulnerability assessments, we, are, we have adaptations for these strategies. Um, yeah, I have to do it manually. So the next topic will be energy management. Uh, energy management is uh, very important, especially when we are talking uh, about uh, uh, municipalities, uh, when we are talking about this public 
uh, institutions uh, because this accurate and periodic data collection is the baseline for all the later processing and calculations of the energy efficiency and uh, renewables implementation. Uh, we will define different types and what are the benefits for uh, public buildings uh, with the implementation of the energy monitoring uh, system, uh, how to elaborate building inventory, uh, how to perform energy audits, uh, what are the main topics of the energy audits and what, would, what should be the outcome of the, the energy audits and how to ensure the municipality's determination and sufficient organizational structures, who are the main persons who should be involved in this uh, energy management and what, they, what would be their role in these processes. We will show you also uh, some of the tools, uh, some of the guidelines, uh, how to improve energy management systems, how to, how to help uh, energy managers uh, to, with their uh, work and how to monitor energy consumptions, how to proceed with all this data. There's some, some of the very uh, significant tools available uh, uh, for the energy management and how to calculate uh, the emissions. Uh, the third topics uh, will be focused in the energy supplies and the productions. Um, to access and exchange of this uh, territorial aggregated and non-identifying data needed for effective sustainable energy planning present this, this presents major challenge uh, because there is no significant obligation with the, with the inside of the new legislations uh, and how to share this local energy data with third parties. You know. We will uh, also define here some of the communications, uh, how to proceed, how to establish uh, these communications, how to receive the data, especially towards the energy providers. Uh, we will also focus here for the mapping of the key stakeholders who are the most important uh, stakeholders uh, by receiving this data. Uh, what means the data mining, uh, how, to, how to proceed with this data mining. Uh, we will define also some of the statistical uh, calculations, estimation of these methodologies, how to receive um, how to calculate data if this, there is uh, some lack of the data or insignificant data, uh, how to analyze all this data because uh, you know that in, in some cases you can have a lot of a lot of data which is very hard to identify which one are relevant and which one are important for us and which one are uh, subject of the further processing. Uh, and of course, we will present you some of the agreements uh, with the relevant state. Uh, stakeholders uh, from some simple agreements to regional observatories uh, and some serious commitments which have to be done uh, for the quality energy uh, receiving. So, uh, of course, we will also uh, focus on how to improve this data sharing. Um, there will be some uh, bilateral partnerships, multilateral agreements, uh, mostly what the municipalities can, can um, provide. Uh, this is uh, just the second slide. This is just the key areas for data, data mining. Um, the topic four will be uh, transport, uh, which has the, one of the largest share of the greenhouse gas emissions. And we will focus here on this uh, mainly for the road transport sources uh, because uh, municipalities or public institutions have the most uh, influence in this uh, road transportation. Uh, we will also try to define some of the other uh, transportation for railways, uh, waterborne transportation, aviation, and off-road transportation. If and only if municipalities have some significant have some significant impact on this. Otherwise, we will focus on the uh, ground transportation, public transportation, municipal vehicle fleet, uh, and this would be our focus in this transportation mode. Uh, so we will have a different mode, uh, methods here, uh, uh, bottom-up methods, top-down methods. Uh, we will talk about this, how to approach, you know, how to statistically define uh, the emissions from the transport, uh, what is the statistical calculations uh, that will help us to estimate the, the baseline emission inventory uh, in this transport session. Uh, of course, most detail we will go uh, on the on the courses itself. Uh, this is just uh, uh, what would be the 
parameters uh, that we will use uh, here for the, the calculation of the baseline emissions in the in the transport uh, according to the vehicle type according to the uh, uh, mileage according to the engine types and so on so uh, as my colleagues previously said this will happen in the 15 and 16 of November in Brussels it will be finally I'm looking forward that we'll be alive uh, to meet you all in person and that we can discuss uh, all the questions that might come up uh, during the some lectures and that we will discuss uh, our, our topics so thank you very much this would be from my side and should you have any questions I'm just available here for for you Great, uh, thank you, Roshan. Uh, now we can uh, move on to my colleagues from the Cyprus Energy Agency. Uh, thank you, Mara. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm ready to share my screen. Okay. So uh, my name is uh, Sabas. I'm the main mentor of the training course number two. And uh, let me introduce you to other two colleagues, uh, Harris and Victor. But uh, all together, we have the responsibility to deliver this course. So before doing so, just a quick introduction to the Cyprus Energy Agency. Uh, it's a non-governmental, non-profit organization established in Cyprus. Uh, 13 years ago, and our um, uh, main vision is to contribute actively to the conservation of energy resources, the protection of the environment, and the improvement of the quality of life. A um, few words about myself. Um, I'm a, an environmental engineer uh, with a master's degree on civil engineering, and I work for the agency since uh, 2009. And uh, since 2016, I'm the director of the Cyprus Energy Agency with a lot of experience on uh, energy efficiency, energy auditing, uh, but of course also uh, on management issues and the strategic development of them of the agency. I coordinate uh, quite a few European uh, projects and um, also I deliver trainings in Cyprus uh, to professionals. And uh, this is um, the information about my colleague uh, Harris. He's a forester, environmental scientist with master's degrees on environmental biology. Uh, Harris is also um, a colleague of the agency since 20, 2009 uh, with a lot of expertise on environmental aspects. And currently he's the um, head of the department on climate change and environment in the agency. He has an extensive experience on sustainable energy and climate action plans and green public procurement, and of course, uh, the management of uh, EU projects and the um, elaboration of environmental impact assessments. And um, my colleague, uh, Mirto, she's also an environmental engineer. Uh, she works for the agency since 2018. Uh, his uh, her, uh, main focus is on uh, employment and just transition and green jobs. Um, she's also coach uh, through various initiatives, especially for EIT Climate Keep. And uh, he, she is responsible for the climate mitigation actions and sustainable mobility at the Cyprus Energy Agency. Uh, this is an overview of the course number two on monitoring, reporting, and verification. And uh, we have uh, six subjects here. And the first one is uh, on vision setting. Uh, the second one on establishing an energy and climate team within the local authority or the regional authority. And then we move on to data processing and verification, energy modeling and scenarios, Sustainable Business Model Campus and Financial Feasibility Analysis. And uh, the last subject is the implementation and successful monitoring of a sustainable energy and climate action plan. Um, actually, this um, 
thematic uh, focus, even if, if it was described earlier to, during the preparation of the proposal of this project for funding. Uh, we have received input from various energy agency and local authorities on the specific needs and the significant barriers that they face in order to adjust the training uh, course to the needs of them, of the beneficiaries. And um, we aim through this uh, two days training course to achieve these uh, learning outcomes. So the learner uh, be in a position to create vision and establish the proper internal administrative structure, to know the key actions needed to ensure political and administrative support for the local strategy, to perform an energy data verification process, to establish methodologies to improve data quality, on how to develop an energy modeling and how to elaborate scenarios uh, for the future trends, to be in a position to understand the key financial indicators like the net present value, uh, IRR, and other uh, important indicators like the life cycle uh, costing, to visualize sustainable energy project ideas on sustainable business model canvas, to elaborate feasibility and environmental analysis, and uh, to plan and monitor the progress and the impact of sustainable energy and climate action plans. So um, this is the expected uh, duration of each uh, training module, but all in all, it is expected to last uh, one and a half days uh, with our presence in Brussels uh, in a few weeks from now. Uh, just to give you a glimpse of more information about the, each topic. So the first one is on vision setting, as I already said. So we explain different techniques on uh, different tools on how uh, a municipality or a regional authority can establish a vision for the sustainable future of uh, the local authority. And this vision will um, uh, drive to the definition of the specific goals of the sustainable energy and climate action. Um, then the second topic is on establishing an energy and climate team. Uh, with our experience in Cyprus working with so many municipalities, we found out how important it is to have uh, a team, uh, an energy team, uh, an energy climate team established in, an, uh, in a local authority. So we're discussing about uh, two, three, four, or even 10 uh, key personnel of the local authority that will undertake the responsibility of the implementation of the SECA. So uh, we once again use some tools and explain why it's important to have this team and who are the key uh, people to, to bring them on board and how the local management uh, will ensure that they have all the resources to, uh, to do their business. So then um, uh, we will uh, concentrate a bit on the data processing and verification. So uh, we'll see what is the usual uh, type and, uh, of data we collect for the setups, how to analyze, to understand them, and how to process and verify their um, validity. So once again, with our experience and following the the guidelines from the um, JRC, I will try to guide them and teach how to process and verify energy and CO2 data. Uh, based on the previous information, we will explain how this data can be used for energy modeling and the elaboration of scenarios. Because as you know, uh, a SECAP is a long-term strategy. It, it is supposed to last until 2030 or maybe 2050. So then we need to know 
what are the current trends, what are the future trends, in order to find um, um, the amount of energy that should be saved, the amount of CO2 that should be saved. So we'll explain to our mentees how to build a business as usual scenario and how to focus the CO2 reductions um, from different measures. And then on topic five, uh, we'll work a bit more on that. Uh, we'll have some uh, more time allocated for this subject because uh, we need to explain to the mentees the sustainable business model canvas. Um, so here uh, we will work on a specific uh, project idea and we'll try to fill it, uh, this canvas. And um, by doing so, we will understand if a project idea uh, is very uh, favorably to proceed or um, there are some challenges to identify and understand. So for those who have already experienced with the business model campus, it's a well-known tool. Uh, there is an adapted version that also includes the sustainability related costs and benefits. And uh, of course, we will um, provide some insights on the financial feasibility assessment of various energy projects. And this is uh, the last. Um, we'll explain the tools used for monitoring the sustainable energy action plans process and progress. So once again, I uh, will explain the requirements by the Covenant of Mayor's Office in order of the frequent uh, reporting and update of the action plan, but also some other tools uh, that uh, has been used in, uh, have been used in Cyprus or other countries for monitoring uh, the sectors. And uh, of course, uh, the day is already, you know, as I told you, is more or less uh, one and a half days all together in Brussels. It's so nice that uh, we'll be all of us in person there and all of you, so we can have this interaction and um, discuss even things beyond the subject of this uh, uh, course. Thank you very much. Thank you, Savas. Um, thanks for that presentation. Uh, so if you have any questions for our mentees, I'd like that um, to ask you uh, that you keep them until the end once all of the presentations have uh, have been given. Um, so moving forward, I'd like to welcome our um, mentors from the Regional Agency of Eau de France. Thank you, Maha. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, we, we are pleased to participate to this um, uh, masterclass. Uh, just a few seconds in order to share the screen. Uh, sorry. J'ai pas l'impression que j'ai la main. Tout l'écran. Attends. Okay. Can you see the presentation? Uh, well, uh, we see your screen, but we see the um, just the Zoom call, not the PowerPoint. Oh, OK. OK. Mm, I try again. Sorry. Is yes. Okay? Yes. Now we see uh, the first slide. Maybe we can. Oh, yes. It's okay. All good. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Uh, so I'm uh, Sandra Garrigou. I will uh, present you some main points of the learning course on uh, adaptation. But uh, before we start, maybe just a few words about uh, Institut Paris Region. Uh, Institut Paris Région is the urban planning agency of uh, Ile-de-France. Uh, in 1960, 
uh, a government uh, initiative gave rise to uh, Institut Paris Région in an effort to uh, establish a master plan for the Paris uh, region. And uh, since uh, 1983, Institut Paris Région has been affiliated to the regional council. And so um, we can see we, we develop uh, 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 different activities. Uh, we are organized in three uh, departments uh, representing a wide domain of uh, interest. Institut Paris Région produces uh, knowledge and uh, data in order to support the regional public policies. Uh, for example, we were involved in the diagnosis of the regional adaptation plan, and uh, this plan was uh, adopted uh, last, uh, last month. Uh, regarding the, the team, we are uh, three uh, reference involved in this uh, learning course. Uh, as for me, I'm a project manager on the energy climate action plan and uh, adaptation. And uh, my main uh, project uh, concerns the development of uh, adaptation knowledge for local public authorities uh, to uh, to develop uh, some uh, tools um, on adaptation and uh, so I was involved in the regional adaptation plan and uh, I also work on the carbon neutrality uh, project. Um, maybe Francisca, it's your go, can you say some uh, words? Yes, thank you uh, very much Sandra. Mm -hmm. um, so I am uh, yeah, a colleague of, of, of Sandra at uh, l'Institut Paris Région uh, and I also participate, um, participated in, in the two uh, first uh, learning courses. Um, and so uh, for me, the main topics I work on are uh, mainly uh, the topic of energy retrofit uh, of buildings. And so everything around the energy transition, transition more in the housing. And so maybe uh, we'll go, um, stage to uh, Marie-Laure, who is our uh, other colleague as well. I uh, sorry, we have uh, we are in the same room, so we have some problem with the. <laughs> uh, so I try again to. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry, we will go on. Okay, so, <laughs> so Marie-Laure is, uh, is a senior expert in the field of uh, climate and energy policies, but you will have the opportunity to discuss with, uh, with her uh, in, <laughs> in Brussels. Uh, sorry for this, uh, for this technical problem. Um, so uh, also uh, we have the uh, opportunity uh, to, uh, to re rely on, on the pool of, uh, of experts. Uh, inside the uh, Institut uh, Paris uh, Région. And uh, for example, we, we work with uh, Erwan Cordo, uh, who is an expert in the field of uh, adaptation, uh, especially in the question of uh, urban heat and uh, cartography. And um, Erwan uh, uh, supports us to develop the materials. And uh, it's also the case of uh, Agnès Parnex, uh, she is uh, an expert in the field of public policy uh, assessment, and uh, Agnès uh, supports uh, us to develop also some uh, presentation for this uh, learning course. So, uh, regarding the, uh, the aim of this uh, uh, learning course, uh, it's to guide the participants in conducting their uh, adaptation uh, process. So, we organize uh, this learning course is... Um, Regarding the main steps of uh, adaptation uh, process, uh, first of all, uh, we will see the basics on adaptation and also on assessment. Uh, we will work on the, the, the diagnosis, how we can establish it, uh, what kind of methods and data we can use it for this. And uh, we will uh, also um, work on the strategy and the action plan uh, how we can uh, establish uh, uh, the, uh, the strategy and uh, what are the, the, the roles of uh, indicators uh, during this uh, adaptation process. 
Uh, you can see we have uh, defined uh, some uh, objectives for uh, this uh, uh, learning course. Um, uh, for example, uh, for us, it's, uh, it's uh, allowed to the mentees to appropriate the concepts and uh, notions associated with uh, adaptation. And uh, uh, also, uh, this, we hope that the learning course could help you to, uh, to prefigure an adaptation climate change policy on your own territory. Regarding the, the contents of these uh, uh, different um, uh, steps, first of all, we pay attention to uh, see, to work on the basics. We think it's very important to see the concept linked to uh, adaptation. Uh, for example, uh, we, we will uh, uh, work on the transformation, on resilience, an adaptive approach to project management. We will see also the concept of uh, uncertainty uh, um, during this, uh, this uh, step. And for assessment, uh, we, will, we will try to put into perspective the evaluation methodology for adaptation to climate change. And so we will work on, uh, on kind of data we can use. We will work on the evaluation question what we what we do we want to answer for what what demonstration are thoughts so we try to have some uh, uh, concept and fundamental to understand how we can conduct um, the uh, adaptation uh, approach and then we will see the question of the diagnosis is the first step of the process adaptation and so we will see what kind uh, of uh, method we can use to uh, establish the diagnosis, uh, we talk about vulnerability analysis, uh, which is a method articulating the notion of hazards, exposure, sensitivity, and capacity to reduce uh, risk. Uh, we will see some uh, example of uh, cities uh, which are already involved in this uh, in this uh, process adaptation. Uh, we will uh, also. Um, um, work on the uh, uh, data sources what kind of data could be used to uh, to this uh, to this uh, diagnosis uh, and uh, we will see also uh, uh, where we can find the resources and the elements to uh, to help to this uh, to this uh, work um, we will see also the question of the tools uh, which are associated with the diagnosis uh, for example we will see some examples some uh, kind of cartographic tools. Um, we will see um, also the question of the workshop. It's very important to, uh, to share the results of the, the diagnosis and to share the works of adaptation. So we will uh, uh, suggest you some example how you can conduct a workshop to share some, uh, some results. Um, and so you can see some uh, sentences in blue um, uh, it's because these uh, resources are a testimony video. We can use uh, some uh, uh, materials, uh, some uh, testimony videos to, um, to complete uh, our presentations. And uh, then we will see uh, the, the final points of this uh, process adaptation uh, regarding the strategy and the action plan. Uh, we will see uh, the method associated to conduct just this uh, strategy, what kind of action you can, uh, uh, you can uh, implement, how you can priority, prioritization your, uh, your uh, strategy, the action of this uh, strategy. And we will see the question of the uh, assessment. Uh, during this, uh, this learning course, we will pay attention uh, about the question of the data, the indicators, and how we can uh, use it. For what for, what kind of uh, works you, you can you can uh, use it. And then uh, we propose you some uh, short time uh, in brainstorming uh, with uh, with the mentees in um, in order to help you uh, to design your first uh, first version of the action plan. I see it could be interesting to finish this learning, learning course with this, uh, uh, with this uh, brainstorming. Um, so just to sum up about the materials we will use. So you will have some presentation, we will have some resources, uh, uh, reports, uh, example of diagnosis uh, about adaptation. 
we will uh, uh, do some uh, practical exercise, uh, especially about indicators we can use uh, during the, the diagnosis. Uh, we have uh, conducted um, a kind of benchmark about uh, data uh, which are used uh, uh, for some uh, different uh, diagnoses and the data which are available on the different uh, observatories. Uh, we will have some uh, testimony videos and uh, then we will see how we can conduct uh, a workshop. It will be uh, this um, uh, setting up of, of a workshop. Um, and to finish, just a few words about uh, the last, uh, the, the last um, uh, IPCC uh, reports. Um, so you have some uh, extracts. And uh, for uh, Europe, um, the uh, scientist uh, has uh, defined four main risks. Uh, which are the uh, heat waves, uh, loss of uh, agricultural yields, uh, water scarcity, and uh, flooding. And uh, there is an important message about OCE this uh, report. Uh, it's the idea to stay within the limits of uh, capacity to cope with the accelerating risk of climate change and uh, mitigation and adaptation is the, are the two strategies for uh, uh, to cope with the climate change. And so it's uh, an important uh, mit, um, message too. And, uh, and I think I have finished and uh, we can see in uh, Brussels. Um, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, Francesca, and <laughs> Marilar. Um, next, we have our uh, final uh, mentors from Aura AA. Yes, Mara, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, okay, great. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for participating. I hope. Uh, you found uh, the previous presentations interesting. Uh, so yes, this is the fourth and final learning course uh, proposed by Energy Watch. And it's all about the display, taking the data, dis how to um, display it, and also to then communicate it uh, to the end users and also uh, understanding how for it to be validated by uh, local authorities. So uh, who am I? I'm, I'm Thomas Knight. So I'm a project manager here at uh, Avona Nelp Energy Environment. So I'm background in engineering, um, working on different, uh, you know, producing analysis on different uh, mar in European markets and things like that. And it's been uh, almost three years now I'm working at Avona Nelp Energy Environment in the data and territorial intelligence uh, team. So basically our role is to make available the information uh, to produce the data, but also to communicate it in a, in a clear way, especially when um, a lot of energy agencies, as well as communities within our um, region, are trying to better understand their transition and better understand where they are right now and where they need to go. And so that is uh, quite an important role for us to, to, to provide to uh, allow them to better understand where they're going. So, um, it's, there we go. So yeah, I'll just give you a quick introduction to Avano and Alpha Energy Environment and also uh, the learning course objectives and a bit of detail on the topics. So where are we based? To give you an idea, uh, we're based in Lyon in France. So on the map, it's the in the red circle and then uh, the highlighted region is uh, the Auvergne and Alpes region if you're not aware already. It's about a population of around 8 million people, uh, almost 70,000 square kilometers and about 4,000 um, communes or so communities um, uh, throughout that who we serve. Uh, that's our kind of um, the client I suppose of our services. So again, yes, uh, we're basically supporting their energy and environmental transition. So whilst we are focused on the regional scale, we also participate in a lot of uh, different projects at a national and European level, such as Energy Watch, to be able to um, develop either both our services as well as the services across uh, Europe. So about we've been in uh, in um, 
in place since about 40 years now and working on a lot of different topics from uh, renewable energy, data again, buildings, mobility. Um, and each each uh, year we seem to be adding more and more services to our um, to our offer. But uh, base, it's based around to monitor and provide data to uh, be able to uh, follow and provide support on different uh, projects across different sectors and also uh, give technical, financial and regulatory uh, advice and, and, and be able to provide that expertise. So again, like I mentioned, we've got about 4,000 communities across uh, the region and they are our um, priority, our target audience, but also we're trying to uh, help the transition of different companies and local operators like local energy agencies, for example, and uh, they make up most of our members as well. So we've got about 80 members and uh, they're either NGOs or private public companies, uh, regional and local governments, and across you know, all of those services that we offer, we're again around 40 people across again three different areas of expertise so the technical expertise covering different european and international projects and then the team which i am in which is the territorial intelligence and the data side and again here's just a list of uh, some companies that uh, prov uh, provide support to us whether it's through um, specific projects or if it's um, uh, signing up to our uh, uh, subscription based um, because we're an association, we also have uh, subscribed uh, companies and organizations that make up our members. So um, moving on from who we are and what are we here for? So this is the learning course on data display, dissemination and validation by local authorities. Similarly to the other courses, it's about nine hours of learning time. Um, and again, as mentioned before, it will be across two days, but one and a half days in, in reality um, in Brussels. Um, and these the objectives of this is, uh, as you've heard, you know, collecting data and identifying best the best indicators is, is very important. And this part is now where do you go once you've got the data and uh, to basically be able to better communicate and understand what you are trying to communicate. So again, some objectives say know your audience and what they need, because it's very important to understand what they need. Um, the, the role of data that it can play in making decisions, because whilst there's a lot of uh, um, regulation and things like that can, that can in, you know, push decisions in different senses, having a better understanding of what the data is saying, that gives you a, a very good, strong position in making a decision. Um, data visualization, um, honestly, being able to understand the, the objective in the audience, but then also what they actually want to do. So um, the actual desired response is very important to understand. Um, so it's just a few objectives. Um, and then obviously trying to understand the different representation styles uh, and then how to implement these. So the outline, um, again, if you wish to participate in this course, it's in, intended to provide you with the tools and the understanding to be able to finish the course and be able to uh, understand where you want to go, what information you will need and what tools you might need to, to proceed with implementing these uh, visualization um, methods, but also to um, be able to identify the needs of key stakeholders. We will also give you an idea about different methods, what, uh, you know, when, when, depending on your objectives, what different methods are applicable, um, how to communicate them effectively, and then give you obviously some specific ex examples of what we do uh, in a run and up energy environment. Notably, two uh, tools that we have one is an online tool called Terry Story, and the other is our observatory, our data observatory, also known as OK. So there's six topics throughout, um, around one and a half, one to one and a half hours per topic, depending on the on the information needed. So under, understanding the effective communication of data, the information needs of the end users, how to actually uh, manipulate that data to be able to put it in the right format and uh, and the right mode to be able to present it, actually implementing these tools. 
Um, topic number five, so it's a uh, it's a specific uh, topic on looking into one example of what we've done here, um, taking the needs of the end users and creating a tool in the end of, at the end. So uh, and that's in continued continued development, and then where to go after that, the actual uh, communication of the data and information, including things like you know, social media, websites, and things like that. So again. Uh, how you know what determines effective communication of data you need to really identify who your stakeholders are and what they need to know the best communication for different um, recipients so for example if you're communicating to government uh, then technically you know, you know technically speaking they might not have the understanding of the topic that you have so you need to be able to you know, communicate it in a clear and concise way then identifying the needs of the end users. So, you know, what information is important to them? Um, if it's to be effective, then it needs to be at the right level of detail, as I mentioned before, and uh, what they will find the most interesting and how they will use it. Because if, if for them, it's uh, they have an objective themselves. So you want to be as useful as you are, as you can be to them. Manipulating and presenting the data, so identifying the different methods, whether it's just simple graphs and charts on Excel, Sankey diagrams, or or um, on a on a on a map, you know, presenting data on a map, and then identifying which you know what are the strengths and weaknesses of each to be able to to better identify it. How to implement these? So once you've identified what the ideal um, um, representation is. Then how do you actually implement, implement it? What tools do you need? What uh, learning uh, do you need? And uh, across different uh, levels of geographies, for example, that might require different uh, representations. For example, some examples here. So on, on top, on the left, it's a Sankey diagram. So it's the flow of energy across uh, a, a period of time. Uh, the right hand side is the two on the right hand side, so it's mapping of information on different levels. So on the top right, it's quite broad, and uh, you know the detail, the less de there's not a lot of detail. On the bottom uh, is a, a lot of detail, and it can be a bit difficult to understand, but there's a lot of information represented. And on the bottom left, it is a just a, you know an innovative way of showing uh, the progress of uh, different energy sources across time, for example. Again, topic five, like I mentioned, is a insight into Terry story, which is a mapping uh, system. Uh, sorry, it's a mapping tool where you can plan um, both. You can visualize historical data, but also plan uh, future uh, developments. So this has been pro produced over the last few years. It's quite detailed now, but it didn't start off that way. And um, the good thing is, the, when you present data, for example, um, people see that there's a need to improve certain data sources. There's need to uh, add different indicators uh, for different for different sectors, for example. So that also promotes the the development of new data sources. And then finally, the dissemination of data information. So how do you pre present that information? So do you pre do you publish a 50 page report or do you repeat you publish a you know a linkedin post for example what you know and then the budgets and the time obviously uh, uh differ between the two so uh there's the two there's the six uh, learning course topics um again what i mentioned before was the idea of this course is to take what you already know in terms of data and uh then be able to better present it and identify where uh, the data can be of, of most use. So thank you very much for your time. And again, I'm available for any questions afterwards. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Um, I'd now like to open the floor to um, our participants. If you have any questions that you'd like to direct either myself or the mentors, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask away. It seems like no one has anything immediate that they'd like to uh, to ask. Um, so then I would like to go ahead and um, summarize what we've uh, discussed. And of course, if you have any questions that you might uh, you might recall or you might think of in the coming days, please feel free to email us. 
Um, so in, in summary, by the end of the Energy Watch project, um, sorry, the Energy Watch peer learning program, um, regional and local authorities should have increased their capacities, uh, skills and competencies towards collecting energy and climate data, um, as well as mon monitoring, verifying and reporting data for your sustainable energy action plans. Uh, thus, if you'd be interested in embarking, in embarking on this journey with us, uh, we encourage you to fill out the EU survey link to express your interest in the program if you haven't already done so, um, and you're seeing this session as a recording, um, and then join us in Brussels in November. In addition, please feel free to communicate this opportunity to your colleagues um, in your organizations and networks that you think can also benefit from the full program beginning on the 15th. Uh, lastly, we will send out uh, the recording registration link and our contact details in case you or your colleagues um, or contacts have any questions about the program in, uh, in the next days. And uh, if there are no more questions, I'd like to thank you again uh, to those of you who have been able to join us today, and we look forward to seeing you in, uh, in Brussels. I see there is a question. From Penelope, uh, will there be deliverables for the indicators for adaption to climate change? Um, deliverables you mean for the project or deliverables um, that you uh, come out with from the uh, from the courses? Could you clarify that? And um, maybe the mentors from the course. Maybe the, the mentors could, uh, could speak up on this um, and answer, answer this question. Um. Well, if I understand correctly, uh, if there will be some specific uh, deliverables uh, uh, after this course, um, there will be uh, after that when you will they, they will if the mentees will prepare their uh, secups, uh, this will be evaluation of these uh, uh, secups will be done after the course uh, after the I think it's uh, like half a year or one year after the uh, the course. But uh, during the course, we will present uh, some specific uh, action plans for the adaptation of the climate changes. So this will be presented on the course. Um, I'll just, I'm not sure if, if the question was directed also at our course for, for adaptation to, to climate change. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly uh, what you mean by uh, by deliverables uh, in general. Um, yeah, exactly. Yes, we are the, the course uh, number number three. Um, so uh, in, in general, like uh, Sandra presented, uh, we kind of did a benchmarking on uh, the different kind of indicators uh, that we used in, in, in different strategies. Uh, at different uh, levels, so national, regional, uh, local level. Uh, and so the idea is to um, present this benchmark to you and then to work together to identify the indicators which are the most relevant uh, to, your, uh, to your territory. So I don't know if this answers your question, but uh, the idea is that we present you some examples and then uh, we work together to, uh, to see what is the most uh, interesting for you, uh, for your territory and what are the, the different data providers that could be available. Thanks. Thanks, Francisca. It seems that the uh, question has been answered. So um, should anyone else have questions, please feel free to get into contact with us. Otherwise, I'd like to thank the uh, mentors for joining us and uh, giving us a, a brief presentation about the courses that will be covered in uh, November, and to thank all uh, potential mentees for joining us and see you in, uh, in Brussels. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.